evening, I'm Kelly Nylinger with episode one of Life Force Radio, Biohacking Survival to Thrival by Living a Clean Life, Dream Life. I'm a survivalist, biohacker, motivational speaker, vitality coach, and whale watching captain in the wilds of Alaska. Episode one will be an introduction to myself and my mission for creating Life Force Radio and video series. I grew up on rural family property. We had several hundred acres and I had kind of the free range and free roam of all of that. So I grew up learning a lot about wild edible plants and medicinal plants and running around barefoot grounded to the earth and learning about wildlife and wildlife ecology. And I grew up in a family where we were very well connected to most of our food. And we also unfortunately got trapped as a family into the modern American diet, sometimes known as the SAD diet or standard American diet. And we got a microwave in the 1980s. And I remember a lot of uh, health changes after that point. But we also grew a garden. It was organic and it was part of my family duties to help provide and procure food for our family. So I spent a lot of time hoeing the garden in my uh, bare feet and, and learning uh, how to take care of plants naturally. And we also had an orchard and I always looked forward to fall harvest time and we would make a lot of uh, canned goods and, and canned applesauce and you know fried apples and that kind of thing. And so it was really a lot of fun. And I also grew up uh, learning how to hunt. My Some of my first uh, wonderful memories were learning how to hunt with my maternal grandmother and also my father. And so yes, women in my family hunted. And not only that, at three years of age, they put a little knife in my hand. It probably was dull, but they taught me how to learn how to butcher wild game that my family had harvested. And so I actually learned how to write my first letters by writing on the freezer paper meat packages that we used as a family assembly line where multiple generations of my family would help butcher and package uh, our family's meat for uh, multiple different extended families and family members. So I learned how to write the letters, uh, you know, VB for venison burger, for example. And that's how I learned how to write was, was on those, those packages at a very young age, probably starting at about the age of three and also learned how to sit at a butcher block with uh, a knife and learned how to cut up meat and also we would cook some of the meat and share some of the tenderloins of that wild game that was harvested with the family so i learned full circle um, and we also used the hide of the animals and sometimes i would actually uh, help preserve them with salt and get to sell them for uh, money for you know school clothes that i wanted and things like that as well so it was pretty neat. We would sell them to a fur dealer and sometimes we would use some of the other products like deer legs and things like that for, for different um, home projects like making coat racks. And so we were utilizing as much of the wild animals that we harvested as possible. My aunt used to make a lot of uh, bone broth soups and things like that. So I learned a lot from different family members and it's been a big part of my life to collect and gather wild foods but unfortunately just to conserve time and to for expediency and just for the lack of understanding of the dangers of it my family got a microwave in the 1980s and then we would also get um, I remember the TV dinner was a big thing and we would get TV dinners and processed foods kind of came into our lives about that time and they were actually cheaper than a lot of the other foods that we could buy in the grocery store that were not processed. So I remember having um, like the powdered mashed potatoes, for example. So my health issues actually started to my knowledge at about three years old. I started to develop a lot of problems with my ears and I had chronic ear infections and had multiple rounds of antibiotics before the age of six, which affects your microbiome in your gut and that can affect your overall health and immune system as well as other systems including just overall mental health and things like that and it can also lead to disease processes later in life. So that was 
the, the beginning uh, of my antibiotic life and my family didn't really understand the dangers of antibiotics. They were just prescribed and no one really knew much else to do. We tried a few holistic things, but um, didn't really know too much to do to help for these ear infections. And eventually my eardrum ruptured at about the age of five. And then I started to also from the age of about three, four or five years old, I, I lost any sense of smell. Actually, I have no recollection of early sense of smell as a child. I remember constantly telling my father that I couldn't smell and I couldn't breathe through my nose. And no one really understood why. I was always going to the doctor and was always sick, but uh, no one would ever mention that it could be an allergy to milk. And so I was put on constant antibiotics, I had constant sinus infections and headaches and would throw up and vomit. And I just became, um, you know, pretty sick. And I was also very active, I was very athletic, I was very outdoorsy. So a lot of that probably helped to combat the negativity from the inflammation that was occurring in my head from the milk allergies. And so I would run around the wildlands and I was grounded barefoot running on the earth's electromagnetic field, you know, just running on the earth's surface and playing in the dirt, playing in the mud, always outside, very much a tomboy. So that probably offset a lot of it, really fascinated with wild foods and what native people ate and ethnobotany. And so that's kind of how I grew up. I sort of had this yin and yang going on, this modern American diet, but this uh, yearning to learn more of natural wild ways and even though I was really fortunate to grow up on a family property that was over 200 wooded acres that backed up to public land that was landlocked and I basically had the free run of that one of the only kids in the, the area and so that was really wonderful but on the downside we also had this processed food coming into our life and so we were you know drinking the pasteurized homogenized milk and Unfortunately, that also had, um, you know, bovine growth hormone and, you know, also just a lot of antibiotics that are not even tested by the FDA. So it, I'm, I'm sure, affected my life in immeasurable ways. And so as life went on, I just lived with chronic sinus infections. And I didn't realize it was one chronic sinus infection from at least the age of three um, up until the age of 38 when I discovered that I had a milk allergy by just simply having enough of this horrible uh, way of life and being so sick, uh, I just felt like I was dead or, I mean, almost better off dead in a way because I was so ill. I would just vomit and have chronic migraines and would have to stop on an hour and 15 minute drive home at least once and sleep for almost an hour just to make it home. I had chronic fatigue also um, suffered from Lyme's disease at least since my 20s and so that chronic infection um, and the chronic sinus infections just started to really affect um, my metabolic health and my overall health and my immune system. I developed autoimmune disease in my uh, early 20s as well and so I started to go through just a lot of chronic health problems and but the fatigue was probably the the most concerning and just the massive inflammation in my head, the brain fog, not knowing where keys were, not being able to remember numbers, not rem being able to remember almost anything, and just thinking, how can this be what life is all about? So at 38 years old, after just having one chronic sinus infection since the age of three and being on probably at least 60 rounds of antibiotics, mostly for sinus infections, along with cortisol steroids for um, the sinus infections as well called flonase, which now I realize are really harmful long term. I was on that for about 20 years. Um, I was just kind of um, at my wits end and, and just didn't know what else to do. I'd been to every basically specialist known to man, although I'd never heard of naturopathic medicine at that time or holistic medicine or anything like that other than just some native remedies that I had learned. So I was just following the allopathic uh, medicine routine of just going to the doctor, spending five to 10 minutes with the doctor, then prescribing a drug, me leaving with um, more uncertainty and more damage as I was taking that medicine than when I arrived. And never any um, explanation of why this could be going on. I remember going to neurosurgeons, um, 
all kinds of different people having MRIs, you know, everything done to my head to look at what this could be caused from. And I remember asking, is there something I could do differently? Is it diet related? You know, is there something I could do? And no one had any answers. And I actually developed another chronic infection, which almost killed me. And I actually, it entered my blood as well. And so I was really on death's door. And that's when I finally just turned to the internet and the research that's available on the internet. And it's since changed my life. I'm now a biohacker, a researcher, a life coach, a vitality coach, uh, a health coach. And it all started from my own health being at death's door and having to take my health and my life into my own hands to save it. And I just simply read something that said the number one cause of sinus infections is actually an allergy to milk. And the easiest way to tell if you're allergic to milk is to do an elimination diet for seven days and see what happens. And it also mentioned gluten sensitivity as well. And I didn't think I had any gluten sensitivity and I certainly didn't think I had any milk sensitivity. I loved milk and I would drink sometimes up to a gallon a week and I would consume sometimes up to, you know, a, a big block, a big block of cheese about that size, you know, um, probably once a week. I just love cheese. I was a kind of a cheese addict. And now I realize that the casein in the cheese is more addictive than cocaine. And so it, it makes sense why I crave cheese on everything and drank milk like it was going out of style and actually developed a milk cough as well. And now that I look back on it, all the signs are there. And I now also realize, by the way, since then, that I also have gluten sensitivity or just should avoid all wheats and grains, um, you know, uh, like rye and, and all of that as well. So I have a sensitivity to that, which I think has been irritable to my bowels as well. So, but let's get back to the milk allergy. So within three days of eliminating milk from my diet, I actually started to breathe through my nose for the first time in my known life. I did not ever remember the feeling of my sinuses draining and actually being able to breathe completely through my nose and to breathe through my nose as I slept at night. And since then I've been on a massive holistic health journey I now realize the dangers of having such chronic inflammation in my brain for so long. It actually will um, make me possibly more susceptible to things like dementia and Alzheimer's and also pro probably, most likely, shorten my telomeres dramatically, which actually shortens your lifespan as well and makes you more susceptible to other chronic diseases. So I we'll just kind of end it there as my first episode. This is 13 minutes long and I'll try to go ahead and upload that. And then next I'll talk about some of the things that I've begun to do to change my health and how I hope that it will reach some of you and maybe there will be something that'll resonate or you'll have some reticular activation about something I speak of and it might help change your life and make your life better or improve your quality of life. So by the way, um, I'll be talking a lot more about light, but these are blue blocking glasses and I have some red light in the background and I'm traveling right now. I do motivational speaking and I also teach survival around the world. So I'm currently um, out of state, but I live currently in Alaska and I also have a home in Michigan and it is on Lake Michigan. And in Alaska, I live on a sailboat to um, mitigate my EMF and just to be as close as I can to nature. and. I also am building an off-grid uh, green log cabin in Montana that I spend a little bit of time at every year. So stay tuned for episode two, and thanks for tuning in, and be well.